Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and today we're answering an international video patient question all about dilated aortic roots. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Luis Castro, who is a leading cardiac surgeon at Dignity Health Sequoia Heart Hospital in Redwood City, California. During his extraordinary career, Dr. Castro has performed over 5,000 cardiac procedures with more than 3,000 involving some form of heart valve repair or heart valve replacement procedure. Dr. Castro, we've known each other for a long time. It is great to see you again. Thanks for being with us. Absolutely, Adam. It's great to see you. It's great to be on the heartvalvesurgery.com website answering questions for your community of amazing patients that share many stories that help other patients get through this process, which can be very scary. Yeah, and we're going to get to a patient question for you, Dr. Castro. But first, you are now at a point where you've treated over 190 patients from our community. And I just want to take a moment to thank you and your team there at Sequoia Hospital. Uh, you're welcome, Adam. It takes a village. It really does. It's not just me. It's a team of people, talented people. We're happy to serve your community. Yeah. And so now let's get to the question, Dr. Castro. And this one is coming to us all the way from Ireland. It's from Des about aortic aneurysms and their progression. And here it comes. Hello, Dr. Castro. This is Des Oleo from Ireland. I've been recently diagnosed with an inflated aortic root and it's currently at 4.5 centimeters. My question to you is, is there a chance that the progression will stop? And in fact, I will never need surgery in the future. Uh, I would love if you could take this opportunity to answer this question. Many thanks, Dr. Castro. Goodbye. Des, that's a really great question. Um, Aneurysms of the aorta are very interesting, and there are many factors that play into whether or not you will ever need anything done to your aortic roots. You look very young to me, so it is important to know that you do have an aneurysm at the base of your heart of the aorta that is 4.5 centimeters. What we don't know is what it was like five years ago. So it is possible that you've had a fairly stable, somewhat enlarged aorta for some time that may never change in dimension. So it's gonna be very important for you to follow up with imaging again in six to 12 months or whenever is recommended by your physician. Um, the younger you are, definitely the more likely it is that these aneurysms, they don't get smaller, they get larger with time. If you were 75 years old, it might be something that you could live with to get you to 90. We gotta look at the long-term plan here. So if you're 30 years old, we gotta be very careful with how we're gonna watch these aneurysms. We wanna make sure that we can safely address them when they get too large. And that's usually about five to 5.5 centimeters in diameter when they start posing a risk of actually rupturing or tearing from the inside. Dr. Castro, quick follow-up. In talking with Des this morning, I learned he's a pretty big guy. I'm curious to know, do treatments of aneurysms based upon guidelines from the American Heart Association are those dependent or relative to the size of the individual and the size of the aneurysm? Des has an aneurysm or a diameter. I don't know if it's an aneurysm. It's important to actually look at the imaging to see what the morphology or shape of the aorta is at the root. But if we're talking just diameter of the aorta, you can imagine that large people, people who are two meters in height or six foot two, six foot three, Football players, very large basketball players, have dimensions that are much larger than the normal human being. So a dimension of 4.5 can be relatively normal in a patient who's very big compared to that same dimension in somebody who's much smaller. Dr. Castor can't leave this conversation with trying to connect aneurysms with what else? Valves. Is there anything else that Des should know about, and the rest of our viewers, about um, dilation of the aorta and valve disease? Great question, Adam. And of course, we're on heartvalvesurgery.com. So I think it's an important question. When you're diagnosed with an enlarged aorta, it's also important to understand uh, whether or not you may have a, an aortic valve issue as well. 
it's not uncommon to have aortic valve pathology associated with aneurysms or enlargements of the aorta at the base of the heart. So along with a CT scan or MRI that images the aorta, it's important to have your doctor order an echocardiogram to exclude the possibility of also having an abnormality of the aortic valve. Des, I hope that helped you and all the other viewers uh, watching this video. I know it helped me and Dr. Castro, again, thanks for taking time away from your very busy practice there at Sequoia Hospital in Redwood City, California and sharing all this wonderful education, insight and research with our community. Thank you, Adam. Keep doing what you're doing. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit parkvalvesurgery.com.